It's pretty cool. It's the first time I've seen that in one of these 12 volt units. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got another exciting battery review video for you today. This time from Watt Cycle. I love testing these budget friendly batteries to see which ones are the best. This is a group 24 size format, lithium iron phosphate battery, of course, 12 volts, 100 amp hour. So we're gonna see what it's made of. So as you saw at that unboxing, we get a battery, we get terminal bolts, and we get a nice user manual. And one cool feature of this battery, before I get into the specifications, you can mount this battery in any direction. Now time for some quick tech specs on this unit before I get started with the testing and evaluation. The tech specs are going to be on this upcoming slide, so your time's valuable, so read it if you want. If not, we'll continue with the test. Watt cycle is fully charged. Time for the capacity test. Going to turn up the charger a little bit so you can see that it is fully topped off. No more current going into the battery, so time to hook it up and pull it down. Power up the inverter and the energy meter. No hidden wires. My sampling shunt. Power leads going to the display. No funny business going on. Real world capacity test. All right, so now I'll turn the alpha inverter on. Then I'll plug in the load. Okay, the test is underway. A little bit higher amperage than my normal test, but I'm running something different. Here's today's battery load, a DC power supply, powering up my RPS well pump since there's no sun. Hey, you don't pump much water when it looks like that. 440 watts, 34 amps of draw. So be back in a few hours. Now it's time for the full power pull. Four alt, Windy Nation cable, Renji shunt coming down to the resistive load. Gonna pull 125 to 130 amps for 10 minutes. See if that BMS holds up to its claims. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the inverter on. The battery is fully charged. We'll see the shunt light up indicating I'm discharging from the battery. 10 minutes starting now. Alrighty, that is exactly 10 minutes in the high 120 amp range, 126 to 128. So the battery handled that load very well. Just crossed over the estimated halfway mark bolt still. So keep pulling. Tanks are full, pumped about 120 gallons of water. Took uh, 1154 watt hours to pump 120 gallons. So I gotta find another load to finish this battery out. I'll finish the test of the watt cycle battery with two battery chargers to get back close to where we were, what the water pump was pulling, so right around 30 amps now. So we'll pull the remaining capacity out, harvest it, and put it into another battery. I'm about to get our money's worth out of this watt cycle. It's fixing to cross the 1,280 watt hour mark. There we went, 1,280 watt hours. So there's our money's worth, let's see how much bonus we get. Keep on pulling. All right, the inverter just shut off. 1,327 watt hours out of the watt cycle battery. It packs a punch, it's got a lot of capacity behind it. That's over 103 amp hours. So you're getting a little bit of bonus with this one. So it's past two tests so far. Now time for the third test, the teardown. Let's seal it up right now. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna see if the internal build quality matches its performance. Uh, I think it's ready to be opened, so I'll open it. We'll look at it at the same time together. Oh, nice. I see big wires already. We got two number eight, 200 degree silicone jacketed wires coming up to the terminals on the top. You got nice terminal caps on this one. Check, make sure nothing's loose. Not very tight, hydraulically crimped connections. Nothing's moving. Nice, I like that. Here's a shot of the BMS, a Shenzhen Washi Energy Company LTD model right there. You can pause and look that up if you want to. 100 amp charge, 100 amp discharge, it performs well. I'll look at it a little closer when I break the pack loose. All the connections are bolted down nice and tight, nothing's moving, everything's got sealing on top of it, so nothing should vibrate loose or not giving you trouble. Now this is a first. Check this out. Metal on top and bottom of the sails. Metal side plates to hold it in compression. 
bolted down to the bottom so it's got a steel plate in the bottom for support so yeah that's pretty cool it's the first time i've seen that in one of these 12 volt units so i get you a shot of the tops of the cells here got a epoxy board separators between each cell epoxy board on the side between the behind the steel plates and so nothing rubs there laser welds on the bus bars machine screw bolted down connections for all the balance leads um the laser welds on this one are not as pristine as some other models, but not bad. The, the welds are complete, just a little bit more splattered looking than some others I have seen. And one thing I did notice when I opened it up, if you can see right there, the bus bars got a little bit of a bend down to them. They're not perfectly straight across. So maybe the bus bar was a little, a little long, so they bend it down just a little bit. It does have an expansion hump. It's not touching the sail, so it's not going to rub. And you can see on this corner here, we got a little bit of a, of a bent up section on this bus bar tab right here going to the positive lead. So just wanted you to be aware of that. You can just see it, you know, looking looking straight onto it right there. Just a little bit of bend on that, but I don't think it's gonna hurt anything, but it is a budget friendly battery. And you can see right here too, we got a little bit of a bent down spot on this bus bar. Just so you know, another shot of these bus bars at a different angle. You can see where they're a little bit bent down through there. I assure you with 130,000% certainty, it was like that when I opened the pack. Get you a shot of this BMS. There's a nice thick aluminum heat sink. Decently thick printed circuit board on this one. And see if you see the glob of sealant back in there. That is where the high temp switch is for this BMS. That's its high temp protection. It has high temp on the BMS. Our temperature sensor that goes up to the BMS. And this unit is supposed to have low temp cutoff protection. So I will test that now. I've got the sensor pulled. I've got a colder than ice ice pack. So I will put the sensor on the ice pack and insulate it with this little piece of foam. And you watch the charger to your right. And I'll give you a time how long it takes to cut it off or if it actually even works. Okay, that's three minutes not cutting off with the ice pack. Let me try something different. Remember, watch the charger. I'm gonna hit it with something a little colder than ice and see if I can get it to trigger the low temp protection that way. There it went. That was pretty quick. Let's warm it back up. All right, there it goes back to charging. Uh, let's check the high temp protection cutout for the cell. Watch the charger. I'll give you a time. All right, there it went. It was 30 seconds. All right, cool back off quick and back up to charging. So I'm gonna try something a little different. Y'all let me know if you like it or not. I'm gonna have a grading criteria that's consistent across these different brands of batteries. So I'll put the number of stars right here. Zero stars means no, do not even think about it. Five stars means yeah, it's a good battery. This battery for load handling, it gets five stars. It handled the load, the full power pull very well. No problems at all with that. Capacity, it gets five stars. It gave you more than what you paid for. Very, very energy dense unit right here. Now, as far as safeties, safeties include the BMS, uh, the protections in it, things like that. So this one gets four out of five stars for the safeties, mainly due to that slow, low temp protection cutoff. I could not get it to trigger with the ice pack. I had to use something a lot colder than ice to get it to trigger. A lot of the batteries are low temp. As soon as you put the ice pack on within one minute, they just drop out. And this one did not do that. So it gets a star knocked off for that. Instruction. Now, this was a tough one on this battery. I, if it wouldn't have had these bent, these bent bus bars and stuff a little bit crooked, uh, I would have gave it five stars uh, because it's got the metal compression, the metal casing. You can mount it any direction. This was, this was a hard one. I was going to give it five, but since we had a couple of little tabs and stuff bent, bus bars bent, I knocked off one, one star for that. So it gets four stars on construction. Now, price and value. Right now, I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in this battery. This is a sub $200 battery. It has more capacity than batteries that cost $50 to $100 more. So price and value, this unit gets five stars. This unit handles the load, it's built decent, trying to find you the best value for your money. And my final criteria, would I run this battery? Yes, I would run this battery. Uh, you know, minus the little couple little nitpicks I've had on it, Overall, yeah, it's a good battery. If you enjoyed today's video, hope you enjoyed the new criteria grading scale at the end. Let me know if you like that or not. Have a nice day and be safe.